how to break free from evil sexual soul ties sexual relationships are very powerful it binds you with the other person it ties your souls together and most times you find it very difficult to pull away from that person i mean how else can you explain a relationship in which someone is being battered is being brutalized and the person is scared for her life or his life and then the person keeps going back to situations like that even when you advise such people it's almost as if they have completely lost their sense of reasoning this is someone who is very objective who can see through everything and can give you explanations about things but when it comes to that one person the person kind of loses his sense of reasoning they don't think anymore a lady who is in an abusive relationship when you talk to her for example she's going to listen to you but when she stops seeing that person same goes to a man who is in a relationship with a highly narcissistic woman I mean, this woman disrespects you, she cheats on you, she does all manner of things and yet you can't seem to be able to break free from relationships like that. This is because it has gone beyond the physical. It is not a spiritual thing and you don't actually have control over it. Take something in the Bible, for example, all of the signs were there. I mean, she was even telling him at one point that the feelings are coming. They are coming to kill you and he was still there. She would ask him what is the source of your strength and your power and all of that. He was busy telling her until eventually what happened? She killed him. For the purpose of those who are seeing my face for the very first time, you're highly welcome to this channel. My name is Wendy Zil. There is a prior video to this one. That is like the part one of this video where I talked about how these soul ties are formed, including the sexual soul ties. So I think for a better understanding of this subject, you'd have to see that first video before you can now come back to this one. The link is in the description box below so how can you break free from a soul tie that has been created by vows majorly vows are made by the words of our mouth one thing that most people fail to realize is that these words we speak they carry life they are very powerful and people enter into covenants and people make vows by the words of their mouths for example if you've made a covenant with a girlfriend or someone and you made promises to that person which you fail to honor that covenant has now tied you with that person and that is a kind of soul tie so one way you can break vows like that and covenants like that is by words of mouth now you're going to counter those words that you have said for example if you say i when the zeal i commit myself to you and i vow that i'm going to be with you all the days of my life i will never leave you you're going to put your name in the box say things that are going to counter that covenant you've entered with that person it's easier to break covenants like that compared to sexual soul ties so i'm just talking about this a little bit because in that video that you're going to check out i also talked about how people create soul ties by making vows by entering into covenants with individuals or, or with their partners okay so by the words of your mouth and when i say words of your mouth you have to actually mean it say it from your soul because when you say something from your soul is like the combination of your mind your spirit and your body you say it like you mean it and from the depth of your heart you say it that way we'll be able to break free from that vow that you have made to that person now coming to being able to separate yourself from a sexual soul tie the first step is prayer sexual soul ties are highly spiritual the only way you can actually break free from this tie is also a spiritual way and that is prayers and it's not just any kind of prayer this is earnest prayer you must make and even fast provided you have the ability to fast if you know you have health conditions then you shouldn't be fasting maybe check with your doctor or something but as long as you're fit and you're healthy enough to fast it is even advisable to fast and pray because it makes your prayers more effective while you're praying about it you need to ask god for forgiveness because premarital sex is a sin I mean, God is not wicked when he intended for sexual relations to only be enjoyed within the confines of marriage. He's not wicked. I mean, he is the one that has put these organs in our body. When you were born and little, did you even know you had these organs in your body? Do you, did you even know that you can actually even use these organs in your body? God is the one that has put these things there. And his intention is for people to enjoy this relationship and this act within the confines of marriage because he understands the implication of sex. It deeply bonds you with someone that it's like almost impossible to break free from. That is why he intends for people to get married first to that someone you believe that you're most compatible with before you can, you know, engage in acts like that. Now, this is one sheet of paper, right? This is one. When you have sex with someone, you have become one with that person. When you try to loosen that soul tie that has been knotted, what happens? You try to, you know, tear away from that person like this. You can see the sound of it is excruciating. It's painful. It is never ever smooth. Look at. 
So you pull away from that person. You kind of tear away from that person like this. And that is why most times you see people trying to come back to mend this relationship. They try to come back and, you know, mend the relationship again. When they mend it again, somehow you realize that, wait, we're going too fast. I don't think this is what I want. Just let's separate and then you try to, you know, you do this again. This... It's not going to keep you healthy. It's not going to keep you mentally fit. It's going to mess up with your mind. Prayer is one of the biggest ways you can break free from this sexual soul ties. While you're making prayers, you're asking God for forgiveness of sin because you engaged in premarital sex. The Bible says that those who come to him and confess your sins, he would forgive you your sin. And the Bible also says that when someone is in Christ, all things are passed away, including the premarital sex, the sexual soul ties, and all of that is passed away and everything is become new so when you come to god in a place of prayer you ask for forgiveness then you ask god to help you break these ties he would help you break the ties and give you the strength to be able to overcome it because it's not always easy people make promises and before long they find themselves you know going back to where they said they're not going to go to again because it's a spiritual thing so while you're praying about it you have to be firm in prayer and you have to be highly disciplined and it's only God that can help you, you know, stay focused on your new path and just, you know, face your spirituality seriously. Now, in the same vein, while you're asking God for forgiveness and praying about it, you also need to forgive yourself. Because when you do not forgive yourself, somehow it has a way of, you know, impacting your life and impacting how you perceive things. You know, when you present yourself as, I'm not worthy, can God even forgive me? I mean, I've done this, I've done that. Yes, God has actually forgiven you when you come to him with a remorseful heart in a place of prayer. But you also need to forgive yourself. When you forgive yourself, that is when you can receive forgiveness from God. So you forgive yourself and also forgive your partner because sometimes relationships like that don't always end well. I mean, if you're a lady, for example, and you've been with a man for maybe 10 years and you find it difficult to pull away from that man, maybe he's even narcissistic, probably cheating and everything. And eventually when you see the light and you're able to pull away from that relationship, you pull away, but you still have grudges. Okay, so in that case, you need to also forgive your partner, forgive him for whatever he has done, forgive her for whatever she has done, all right, so that you'll be able to move on, okay? So forgiveness is both ways. God is forgiving you, you're also forgiving yourself. Now, after that is done, the next and the final step for you to be able to be free from sexual soul tie is total separation. You have to like totally separate yourself from this person, from whatever is going to remind you of that person, whatever is going to bring that person into the picture. You can't like keep everything that is reminding you of this person and expect that you're going to be separated from that person. Maybe you have movies you've done together, you have pictures or you've been so bonded so well that you're a pair. Like they can't see one person and don't see the other person in a particular place. So you have to like intentionally separate yourself from that person, separate yourself from associations that is going to bring you close to that person. If it means losing their number, total disconnect from that person. This is very important because if you do not do this, you would also still find yourself going back to that relationship and it's going to make it very very difficult so when you totally totally separate yourself from this person that's when you'll be able to now receive the total freedom that god is giving you when you follow this process from the beginning from the point of prayer to forgiving yourself to asking god for forgiveness to forgiving that person that has hurt you and to you know separating yourself completely from that person you'll be able to break free from this sexual soul tie now at this point i like to say that once you're able to break free from this person you need some time to heal because it's not a small thing it's not a small something no person where you don't deal with like 15 years some people say if you don't know somebody from secondary school you don't know this person for a very long time. You just yanked up from somebody. So you need your heart to heal. You need like your emotions to heal. You need to be whole again. So it's not the best time to go into another kind of relationship because you're still carrying your baggage. You need to totally heal, totally heal from that energy. Totally, you know, expel all of that energy from your body and be whole again before you can now go into another relationship.
because it's always best to you know be clean be free and to see clearly so that you'll be able to make the best choice because this time around you're more knowledgeable you're more aware and you know about the spiritual thing so you don't just entangle with anybody so when you take your time to heal and put yourself from all of those energies and all of those entanglements later on you'll now be ready and free to enter into another relationship with your clean eyes wide open and with full understanding and your ability to reason properly. Thank you so much for watching. To all of my returning subscribers, I highly value you. To all of my new subscribers, you're loved and highly welcome. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not done so yet. Stay blessed and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.